This next lesson describes the configure window. This window is broken down into six different tabs. These tabs allow you to load pre-configured and recent strategies, select which alerts you wish to monitor, filter the universe of available symbols, define which exchanges are scanned, use custom symbol lists, and customize the window name for easy future retrieval. Don't be overwhelmed. While there are literally thousands of available combinations, you don't have to worry about them all. You only need to select one or two. Let's start with the Strategies tab. This tab allows easy retrieval of pre-configured strategies that have been created by the Trade Ideas team as well as the ability to retrieve the last 25 strategies that have been used on this account. Click on the plus next to one of the folders to expand the tree view. In addition to loading a variety of strategies, this is also where you can create your own strategy from scratch. The pre-configured strategies menu is a useful place to start. You can instantly create an entire window at once based on our pre-configured strategies. Of course, you don't have to use it exactly as it is, but it can be a nice place to start. Once you select a strategy, the right-hand pane will update with the description of the selected alert, in addition to the various alert and filter icons that represent this strategy. To load the strategy, click on the Load Settings button on the right side pane. Look for the orange arrow. It will identify which settings are loaded. Please note, if you left click on one of these icons, you will be taken to our help page that describes the alert or filter in detail. If you right click on the icon, you will be taken to the appropriate configuration tab that represents the icon, allowing you to quickly and easily modify its respective settings. The flip button on the lower right will effectively reverse any strategy that you've created. If you created a bullish strategy looking for new highs, it will reverse that into a bearish strategy looking for new lows. Let's look once again at its configuration. Selecting the current settings option with the orange arrow pointing towards it will once again provide you a snapshot of its configuration on the right side pane. Remember, you can right click on an icon for easy modification. Let's clear our settings. The next tab in the configuration window is Select Alerts. This tab allows you to define the triggers for the alert window. In other words, this describes which of the alerts pass through the system. Each alert type has a checkbox next to it. Select as few as one alert type or numerous different alerts. The choice is up to you. Perhaps I want to look at stocks making new highs in addition to stocks that are up a certain percentage for the day. You will notice that many of these alert types have an alert specific filter next to them. The alert specific filter field has information which is different for each alert type. For new highs, you can define whether you're looking at a one day new high, one week new high, or even a 52 week new high. For the new low bid, this value represents the minimum number of shares on the bid that must be present before the alert will trigger. The details of the alert specific filters will be covered in other lessons where we will take a closer look at the individual alerts. But all of these have something in common. Leaving them blank shows the most alerts. Entering a number, for example, I want to see stocks making a 30 day high, limits the number of alerts. Entering a larger number, such as a 52-week high, will limit it even more. Consider this a quality column. Subsequent video lessons will focus on specific alert types and their use. The next tab, Window Specific Filters, quite possibly is the most important group of settings. These are slightly different from the alert specific filters that were previously discussed. These filters apply to all of the alerts in the system, not just a particular alert type. 
For any alert to be generated, it must first pass through these set of filters. The first two items, for example, are min price and max price. This is the way many people choose which symbols they trade. For example, maybe I only trade stocks between five and a hundred dollars. By leaving the setting blank, again I see more alerts. If I remove this value, I'm not filtering on price at all. Max spread is another very useful filter. It can be used in a couple different ways. If I'm looking for liquid stocks, I may want to set this value to five pennies. Otherwise, I might see stocks that look interesting, but because of the large spread, I won't be able to effectively enter into them. If I'm trading post market and place a value of say 20 in the max spread field, I will filter out stocks which have stopped trading at the end of the day, indicated by their inordinate spread size. Most stocks, regardless of when the bell rings, will have a small spread if they're actively traded and a large spread when the volume dries up. This is a much better way than using the clock to determine which stocks are in play and which ones are not. Next, we'll take a look at min daily volume and max daily volume. This is the average number of shares per day that a stock trades. This is slightly different from the previous few filters because this is an average based on historical data where the previous ones were based on the most recent print. Again, I can set a range, say everything between 250,000 and 1 million. Or everything up to a million. Min current volume and max current volume are quite possibly the most powerful filters in the system. These compare today's volume to the average volume for this time of day for the stock. A value of 1 says I'm looking for average volume. Raising the value to 2 will only show stocks that are trading 2 times or 200% of its average daily volume at this point in the day. You can also set a maximum value. Alternatively, I can say I'm only interested in stocks trading on lower than average volume, only things which are less than 1. This is especially useful when you want to segregate the market say having one window with low volume stocks and one window with high volume stocks. Of course leaving them blank will produce the most alerts. Additional detail and other window specific filters is available in our video help section. The exchanges tab allows you to select which exchanges your alert window will monitor. This is specific and unique to an alert window. You may have one window monitoring listed securities another watching NASDAQ, and yet another looking at PINKS and over-the-counter bulletin board securities. If one or more of these options are grayed out, it may be necessary to complete the online exchange agreement for the respective exchange. Please visit our homepage at www.trade-ideas.com and select the Advanced Features and Account Maintenance link towards the top. After you log in, your entitlement status will be visible. Please click the appropriate link to enable its data. Complete this online agreement to gain access to the data. Trade Ideas will not only scan the entire market to present you with trading ideas, but it can also monitor a select group of stocks by creating a symbol list. You create symbol lists from the application toolbar. Create a list from scratch or copy and paste the symbols with ease. Once you create a symbol list, you can restrict the scans to securities in that list or multiple lists. These lists can represent your portfolio, symbols you are successfully trading, or sectors. Your choices are virtually endless. Additionally, you can use a list to exclude symbols from your alert windows. If you would only like your alert windows to consider a single symbol, this option is available as well. This is often useful for backtesting a strategy to ensure a desired symbol will populate your window. The final tab is Window Name. Place as descriptive a name as possible in this field so you can easily retrieve your settings from the Recent Settings folder in the Strategies tab.
This concludes this lesson on the configuration window.